Well, hello out there, all you kiddos. How are you doing this week? Are you being busy at school? Have you been uh, getting pumpkins, doing fun pumpkin things? Um, I know we've been talking a lot about Thanksgiving and thankful hearts, and we're going to have another lesson about that tonight. Um, we're going to just kind of keep, keep building on what we've learned already. So um, actually, I'm going to kind of start with maybe some sad stories. No, no, but you know what? We'll find out why, why we need sad stories too. So um, I'm going to talk about a boy named Johnny, and it's just a made-up name. It's not anybody I know or anybody here knows, so it's made up. But there probably is somebody who has a sad story like this Johnny. Um, he's sad because he doesn't have anybody to teach him how to read. Hmm. How sad would that be? In his country, there aren't any schools. So who do you suppose could help Johnny's sad story? Hmm. Think about that. How would you feel if you didn't know how to read or, or didn't have a place to go to to help you learn how to read? That would be really difficult, wouldn't it? Well, here's another one, a, a girl named Susan. She has a sad story because there's no people in her life to teach her about Jesus. In her country, churches are against the law. Wow. Can you imagine that? Going to church would be against the law if you could get arrested for going to church or coming to church like this? Wow, we, we have it really good in, in America, don't we? We have a lot of freedom. We need to be thankful for that. But who could, who could fix Susan's problem? What about Bob? This boy named Bob. He has a sad story because his parents can't take care of him. They use drugs, and he has to go to foster care. He wants them to get better, but he's afraid that they can't. And maybe, maybe you know of someone in this situation. And, and who can help Bob's sad story or our friend's sad story? One more. Story of Chloe. She has a sad story because she's sick with cancer. She has gone to see many doctors, but she can't do all the things that her friends do. She's too, too tired and weak from her treatments. Who can help Chloe's sad story? Who could help with all of these stories? Each of these stories should remind us to have thankful hearts for all the good things God has given us. We can also use our good things to help make other people's stories better. So today we're going to learn about being thankful and how God wants us to have attitudes to appreciate the good things that he's given us. I know the last time we talked about having thankful hearts, and this is a little bit more about that, having a good attitude, and maybe how we can help others have a good, uh, make their story good. So um, let's see. Do you know what word this is? Thanks. Yep. Pretty easy. Okay. Can you tell me what this word is? Giving. Did you know, some of you know what compound words are. It's two words put together to make one word. Thanksgiving is a compound word. Can you see those two words? Thanks, giving, thanks, giving, thanks, giving, right? So who should we be, or whom should we be saying thank you to on Thanksgiving? Hmm? Um, maybe teachers for teaching us about compound words, helping us read. Um, maybe we should say thank you to the people at our churches who help us know Jesus. Um, our parents, they do so much for us. Um, maybe not all kids have parents that are, that are able to be with them all the time. And so we should be thankful when we are able to be with our parents and do things with them. Um, but who should we really be thankful for the most? Who should we give the most thanks to? How about God? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It should be God. Um, how would we show God that we feel thankful? How, how does he know that we're thankful? Wow. Give me, give me think, think about that a minute. What about, a lot of times we fold our hands and close our eyes to do this. We pray. Hmm? That shows God that we're thankful. Um, serving other people, helping other people. Maybe there's some leaves out in the yard in your neighbor's yard or something. Some sticks needing picking up or something. You can go do that for them. That's helping. That's serving. Helping others. What about um, not being greedy? If we, you know, we, we, maybe we had a really good dessert after, after supper and we're pretty full. We really don't need any more, but yet we want some more. And knowing when to say no and just being happy with what we've got, that's a way that we can show God that we're thankful for what we've got. Um, what about, some of us have a lot of toys and fun things like that. We could take care of the things that we have, help pick up our rooms, help um, maybe bring clothes to the laundry for mom, um, help put groceries away, take care of the things that we have. That's showing God that we love him. So I'm going to read a Bible verse about giving thanks to God and see if you can hear three reasons why we should say thank you to God. Okay? Um, and this is from Psalm 100, and I'm going to read a verse here. It says, Enter his thank gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever, his faithfulness continues through all generations. Did you catch some? I'm going to read it one more time. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Now listen close. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever, his faithfulness continues through all generations. Okay, did you catch it? One of them is, why, why, should, or why should we say thank you to God? Well, the first answer is, because the Lord is good. And that's pretty easy to understand, isn't it? God is good. Okay? Second one, his love endures forever. You know what that means? That means his love will never run out. He can't run out of love for any of us. He loves us so much. That's just almost hard to believe, isn't it? But that's the second one. God's love will last forever. And the last one is, his faithfulness continues through all generations. And that means he keeps his promises, even to children. Okay? So if God makes a promise, he will keep his promise. And that's why we need to give thanks to God. Because he's good because his love will never run out, and because he keeps his promises, right? So, one of your little activities in your packet this week is a little thankful wheel. Um, and I'm going to have you, I started, I did a little bit of coloring, and then I wrote a couple things on here. One of them I wrote, it says, I'm thankful for... And then this little piece of the pie here, you got to write something. And I wrote school. I didn't draw a picture of school, but you could probably draw a picture of school and something in there. And why are you thankful for school? Because you get to see your friends there, maybe? Maybe they have uh, really good food. I know a lot of them are doing breakfasts and lunch, and I know through the summer a lot of them did extra food things. Maybe, maybe you really like their food. Maybe you like the teachers. Maybe you like to just learn. Maybe you like, there's so many things that you like about school to give God thanks for. Um, another one I wrote is parents. Why are you thankful for your parents? Think of some of the things they do for you. They wash your clothes. They help you with your homework. They go to your ball games. Maybe they read you bedtime stories. There's a lot of reasons to be thankful for parents, isn't there? 
So what else could you put in there? You have to think about that. The next one I have is blank, so you're gonna have to write something in there. Maybe your church. Think of reasons why you are uh, thankful for your church, because it teaches you about God. Huh? Maybe you have friends at church. What else? How about Jesus? We haven't really talked about being thankful for Jesus. Why, why should we be thankful for Jesus? Because he came and he died on the cross to save us from our sins so we can go to heaven someday, didn't he? That's pretty important. And maybe, maybe another one might be uh, your health, especially now with the COVID stuff going around. If we're healthy, that's a pretty good thing, thing nowadays. So maybe we need to be thankful for our health so we can play and, and just do all the things that you kids should do. So there's all kinds of things that we should be thankful for. I didn't even go to um, like all the food and so many other things that we just forget about. The weather, the sunshine, what was on that other list from, from the other time? Hmm. Popcorn, I think there was on there, cars. There's just so many things to be thankful for. And you know what? Thankful hearts always act. They do things. And when the, our hearts appreciate what God has done for us, we should show, do something to show our attitude of gratitude, or our attitude of thankfulness. So I want you to think a little bit about how, how you can show that you have thankful hearts. One of them is one of the things that we do every year about this time. Um, it has something to do with shoe boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We put fun stuff in them. We put school supplies in them. We put clothing in them. Hygiene items. That is a really good way to show God how thankful we are for the things that we have. And I'm going to talk about um, doing the shoe boxes just a little bit in a minute. But first, you know I like word searches. <clears throat> Got another one for you about being thankful. I found the first one that's four seasons right there. I think Grandma Jan talked a couple weeks ago about the seasons. See how all this stuff just kind of ties together? The seasons and being thankful and showing how thankful we are by doing shoe boxes. And it, it's just cool. Another one, how many words can you make from Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Pull those letters out of there and see if you can make 20 words. I got one. I was thinking and I thought, hey, think is a word. So that'll keep you busy for a little bit. Here's a Thanksgiving scramble. And you might have to look up some of these Bible verses to find the words that go in the blanks because they're all mixed up. All righty. So you uh, check that one out. That one might take you a few minutes longer. OK, so now I'm going to talk about our shoe boxes. You know what? This is my friend, alpaca. You know what he says? I'll pack a shoebox, will you? Hmm. That's his little challenge. Oh, I'm going to pack a shoebox. And I'm going to pack one of these shoeboxes. OK? I didn't get it packed yet, though, guys. So um, when you come next week, we're going to pack these shoeboxes. Oh, he's tired. He must have had a long, hard day. OK, he was busy shopping for shoeboxes. Um, we're going to fill these next week. I have a whole bunch of stuff here that we're going to use to fill them up. Um, but I know it's kind of fun to go shopping and get stuff on your own. So if you want to bring things to put in the shoeboxes, you are more than welcome to. Please, please do that, OK? Um, if you're able to bring. Um, $9 to cover the shipping fee for a shoebox, that's great. If not, don't worry about it. We'll make sure it's covered one way or another, OK? And we've got the labels here for you and all that good stuff. So yeah, this one's kind of empty. We need to fill it. We need to fill a bunch of these. So I need to see you next week so we can do that, huh? Um, yeah, here's my, my picture. Want to go shopping? I'll pack a shoebox. I like that. 
alpaca shoebox, will you? So all we need to do is, and um, if you want a box to have at home to do with your family, um, get a hold of me and I can um, get a box for you. Um, the collection week will be November 16th through 23rd here at our church. So we'll need to have the shoe boxes back by then. I can send along some with you on the fourth, uh, yeah, on the fourth, next week when you come. And there would still be time to get one in, so you can do that too. And then we fill the shoe boxes, we put some money in and bring them back here. And then we pray for those kids that get those shoe boxes. And that's our way of showing thanks to God for all the things he's given us. We give back to other people. And so to lead into this for next week, I want you to think about shoe boxes this week. And I have a story for you. It's written by Franklin Graham. Um, Franklin Graham is the man who started the whole shoebox thing several years ago. And so he has written a story um, about this, and we're going to read that together. It might be a little bit longer than what we're usually used to. So I think we got a few extra minutes. We can sit and listen to this. So it's called A Wing and a Prayer. And like I said, it's, it's by Franklin Graham. And Clayton will have the pictures that you can see the pictures as I'm reading. Um, they're beautiful illustrations. I don't know who illustrated by Tommy Nelson, it says. I don't know Tommy Nelson. I know who Franklin Graham is, but I don't know who Tommy Nelson is. But he sure did a nice job of pictures in here. So, Jesse had just put the finishing touches on his shoebox. With a smile, he walked to the front of his class and stacked his box among the others. The teacher began to pray. Dear Jesus, please find special kids to receive all these Christmas presents. Help this to be the best Christmas they have ever had. Help them to know that you love them, <clears throat> excuse me, like you love us. As the children put away their wrapping paper and tape, crayons and stickers, Jesse's teacher explained how each shoebox would complete an amazing journey. Each box would travel around the world until it found its way to a child needing to hear of God's love. That night, as Jesse crawled into bed, he wondered about the little boy who would open his shoebox. Raimundo, an eight-year-old boy, had no idea that Christmas was about to come to Alto Risco. In his poor, tiny village that lay deep in the jungle, March was a hot and sticky time of year. Raimundo had never been anywhere else in the whole world and rarely had anyone come to visit the isolated village. But Raimundo clearly remembered the day that Dr. Annie came from America. She brought medicine for the sick and even helped the villagers learn to speak English. The children taught her how to make round balls from the river mud, and she taught them how to play soccer with a ball she had given to them. For Raimundo, however, there was no fun in this village. He usually just watched the other children jump rope and play soccer. He missed his parents and feared that the men with the guns would return the men who took his parents away. Hi, Raimundo, Sarita smiled and sat down next to him. Do you like my dolly? Her name is Esperanza. It means hope. I pray that God will give you hope and make you smile again. But Sarita couldn't make his frown disappear. From off in the distance, a buzzing noise grew louder. All the children stopped playing, ran out into the open, and looked up into the blue sky. Pedro began jumping up and down. Manuel screeched with an excitement. An airplane! Dr. Annie huddled the children close together as the plane circled the village and then safely landed on the grass strip. When the pilot opened the door, Dr. Annie and the children saw their friend Ma Mateo hop down as the dust swirled around his feet. Merry Christmas, he shouted over the roar of the engine. Christmas, Annie asked. What are you talking about, Mateo? Just then, Dan Hogan, the pilot, unlatched the cargo door of the small plane. The children ran, nearly stumbling over each other, and peered into the airplane. Brightly colored boxes were stacked all the way to the top. Merry Christmas, Mateo shouted. Build a fire, fry some tortillas, we're having a fiesta tonight. As the sun set behind the big palms, Mateo explained his surprise visit. This is a special time for all of us, Mateo explained, looking into the hopeful faces of the kids. Children in the United States 
a country far away decided to celebrate Christmas by giving something to you. Christmas is the time when God sent his only son to earth to give us hope. Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to anyone. Dr. Annie, Matteo, and Dan handed out the boxes. On the count of three, Matteo shouted, you can rip them open. Uno, dos, tres. Tres was drowned out by the happy squeals of the children as wrapping paper was tossed into the warm night air. As the children played show and tell with their presents, Dan noticed a somber little boy sitting alone. Dan nudged Annie. What's with him? Annie looked up at Raimundo. His parents were killed in the village raid last year. He hasn't spoken since. Dan walked over to the dwindling pile of shoeboxes and picked up an oversized box marked boy. Dan slowly approached Raimundo and held the box up for him. Raimundo just shook his head. No, Dan asked. Somebody very special packed this box for you. Who knows, maybe you'll make a new friend if you accept this gift. Raimundo turned away, his lip quivering. Dan raised the lid of the box. He whistled, wow! With a little curiosity, Raimundo looked over. To his surprise, Dan was pumping up a soccer ball. He held out the ball until Raimundo reached for it. Now that wasn't so hard, was it? Dan asked with a smile. He held the box up. Why don't you see what else there is in there? Raimundo carefully examined each of the items. A harmonica, a toy motorcycle, a bookmark with a Bible verse, a toothbrush. Dan began to show Raimundo all the things you should not do with a toothbrush. Comb your hair, scratch your back. And to Dan's surprise, the sad little boy's frown turned into giggles. Finally, Raimundo reached into the box and pulled out a round object wrapped in string. He held it up to Dan and shrugged his shoulders. Amigo, that's a yo-yo, Dan answered. Here, let me show you how it works. Dan put his finger through the loop and propelled it through the air. Raimundo's eyes widened. Dan handed the yo-yo to Raimundo, helping him lace his finger through the string. The lesson was interrupted when they heard Annie call out, Dan, Raimundo, the tortillas are almost done. It's time to celebrate. As Raimundo put all the gifts back into the box, he saw an envelope. Raimundo grabbed it and shoved it into Dan's hand. Oh, Dan said, this is a letter to you. Dan slowly read each word to him. And it said, to my new friend, Merry Christmas. This shoebox is packed just for you. I live in an orphanage with lots of other kids, but I am going to live with a nice family soon. I hope you like all this stuff. I proved that it would help make you happy. I prayed that it would help make you happy. The yo-yo is my favorite. Mr. Peters, my new dad, said that the yo-yo is sort of like Jesus. He came to earth to save us, went up to heaven to make home for us, and one day we'll return to earth to take us to heaven with him. He came and left and will come back again just like the yo-yo. It's so much fun to have a new friend so far away. I'm praying for you. I'll check the mail every day looking for a letter from you. Your new friend, Jesse. P.S. Draw me a picture of you with the yo-yo. The morning after the celebration, Raimundo sat at the base of a banana tree. The sun's rays beaming through the branches sparked memories of Raimundo and his father. He remembered shimmying up the trunks of the trees and throwing bunches of bananas down to his padre. He wished for times like that again. Raimundo's thoughts were interrupted when Pedro pulled at his arm. I'll let you listen to my new CD player if you'll let us play with your soccer ball. Raimundo kicked the ball toward Pedro. Thanks, amigo. Pedro threw the ball to his friends, and Manuel kicked it so hard that it flew right past Raimundo. Raimundo took off, chasing the ball toward the line of trees and shrubs just beyond the village. Annie rushed up behind Dan, breathless. Dan, stop him. We're afraid the men who attack the village are camped just beyond those trees. If they see Raimundo, Raimundo, Dan shouted, stop. But Raimundo continued to chase the ball. Dan followed him. Just as Raimundo reached the ball, Dan grabbed him and slung him onto his shoulders. When they returned to the field where the kids were playing, Raimundo couldn't believe his ears. Raimundo, way to go, you saved our ball. They were all cheering for him. Raimundo smiled holding the ball way up in the air before tossing it down to all the children looking up at him. Dr. Annie leaned, to, leaned toward Dan. That was too close, she whispered. Later that day, Dr. Annie, Dan, and Mateo talked with the chief of the village. 
Annie sat down with the children and explained, it is not safe for us to stay here. It's only a matter of time before the men who attack the village come again. We need to leave this village quickly. As Raimundo gathered his things, he found the bookmark that Jesse had sent in his box of surprises. Raimundo smiled and handed it to Dan. Well, would you help me read these words that Jesse sent to me? With great surprise, Dan turned and looked at the boy. Raymond, Raimundo, you can talk. He picked him up and swung him around. Of course I will. After the plane was loaded and the villagers were safely on board, Dan brought the engine to a roar. The plane began rumbling over the rough, rocky ground, speeding faster and faster until the plane's wheels were in the air. The villagers watched Alto Risco and the danger that surrounded it grow further and further away from them. As Dan directed the plane over a row of trees, he saw several men running toward the plane. Stay down, he yelled to his passengers. Raimundo heard a popping noise as he peered through the windows. The men with guns were shooting at them and had hit a wing of the plane. Struggling, Dan regained control and tried to guide the plane to climb higher. Dr. Annie was making her way from the cockpit toward the children when she suddenly fell to the floor of the plane, clutching her arm. She had been hit. The children screamed, all but Raimundo. He crawled over to Ann, Dr. Annie, stroked her forehead, and whispered a prayer. Please, God, save Dr. Annie. Please save Dr. Annie and get us to our new home. The children peered through the windows as the trees became smaller. Raimundo looked up into the clouds and wondered if he was closer to God. Soon after, on one good wing and a whispered prayer, the small plane of villagers glided home to safety. As they touched down, Dan called out, Here we are, children, your new home. When the plane rolled to a stop, the villagers stepped out onto Via Placida, meaning peaceful village. A doctor and nurse were there to meet them, and they whisked Dr. Annie off in an ambulance to a missionary hospital. Seeing the frightened look on Raimundo's face, Dan, Dan leaned over and said, Dr. Annie's going to be just fine. Would you like to go to the hospital with me to check on her? Can we? Can we? Raimundo asked. Dan and Raimundo climbed up into an old truck parked next to the plane and bounced over the rough trails until they came to a little hospital. After a long wait in the courtyard, the nurse told Dan and Raimundo they could see Dr. Annie. Senor Dan saved us from the men with the guns, Raimundo exclaimed as soon as they entered the room. Dr. Annie smiled and calmly replied, Raimundo, remember the Bible verse we all learned? Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and he shall direct your paths. Jesus is with us, Raimundo. He is the one who saves. Raimundo smiled and nodded. Tell me more about him, Dr. Annie. Tell me more. I want to know Jesus the way that you and Senor Dan do. Dr. Annie glanced at Dan through tearful eyes, knowing that God had answered their prayers. Dan looked up at Annie and then knelt down beside Raimundo. If you believe in Jesus with all your heart, Raimundo, say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, please help me to trust you to keep me safe in your hands. Please forgive me for everything I've done wrong. Come into my heart and help me to be better and help me to do what you want me to do. Amen. Raimundo thought about each word as he repeated after Dan. Then he added, and thank you for my friends, Dr. Annie, Senor Dan, and my new friend, Jesse. Raimundo, Dan put his hand on Raimundo's shoulder. We have something special to tell you. Dr. Annie and I are going to be married in a few days. Raimundo quickly looked to the floor. Why the frown, Dr. Annie asked. Raimundo didn't look up. Are you going to leave us? Raimundo, how can we go away and leave all of our friends that we love, Annie began. God has called us to live here and has provided for all of our needs, but we've also asked the Lord for something very special. Do you know what it is? Raimundo's eyes lit up. A shoebox of surprises? No, Raimundo, Dan said with a grin. We've asked the Lord to give us a son just like you. We know your parents will always be in your heart, but would you like to live with us and let us take care of you? Raimundo tried to speak, but the words just wouldn't come. You don't have to answer us right now, Raimundo. Just think about it. And then Raimundo writes a letter to his new friend, Jesse, and it says, To my new friend, Jesse, 
Thank you for giving me the best Christmas ever. You gave me the most fun gifts and the best surprises. I'm sharing my soccer ball with Manuel and Pedro, and every time I spin my yo-yo, I think of how Jesus left heaven and came to earth to give me the best gift ever, then returned to heaven to make a home for me there someday. He came and went back up, just like my yo-yo. And guess what else? Jesus gave me a new home, just like you. I live with Senior Dan and Dr. Annie in a safe village. I've learned that no matter where I am, Jesus will always keep me safe. I did what you asked and drew a picture of me with the yo-yo. Maybe we'll meet someday. Your new friend, Raimundo. P.S. I memorized the Bible verse. Here is one for you. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, verse 24. So that's how special a shoebox full of small things that we can give to other children in the world, how special that can be to them. It can bring them to Jesus, maybe to new families. So I want you to think about that this week as we get ready to do our shoeboxes when you come next time, next week. And um, pray for the, for the um, child or whoever is going to receive the shoebox that you will be packing. We don't even know who that is, but pray for them that it will bless them and that Jesus will come into their hearts and that they um, will go to heaven someday. And think about that yo-yo. I thought that was pretty cool, the yo-yo, how, how thinking of uh, up here as Jesus in heaven, and then when he was born, he came down to earth, but then he went back up again to um, prepare a place for us um, later, and then someday he's going to come back down again and take us all back up to heaven with him. That's kind of cool. I, th I think that's neat. So maybe find a yo-yo to put in your shoebox next week, okay? All right, let's um, close with prayer, and then we'll be on our way. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to show how thankful we are for the, all the things that you have given us by packing shoeboxes for children far away, in jungles, in lands that we don't even know exist. And we just pray that as we put these together, you will put Jesus in their hearts and that they will come to know and love you as well and that you will be just a huge blessing in our lives and in the other children's lives as well. Um, keep us safe until we can get together again and we ask that you'll forgive our sins in Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next week, guys. <laughs>